So Google has now released Android 11 and I have a Google Pixel to try it out on and we're going to be taking a look at the cool new features as well as the more important adjustments that have taken place under the hood. So don't go anywhere. Hello, hello, I'm Jay and you're watching DS Tech Media where we cover everything technology specializing in Linux and open source, but also sometimes Android. So like the title says, uh, Android 11 is out and there's plenty of new stuff to take a look at. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the biggest changes are actually to the core Android system behind the scenes via Project Mainline, which adds 12 new Project Mainline modules, bringing the number up to 21. Uh, with Android 8, we got Project Treble, which allowed certain security modules to be updated directly from Google. And in Android 10, we got Project Mainline, which focused on parts of the kernel. And Android 11 expands that to 21. Those modules include the NN API or Neural Network API, StatsD Statistics Daemon, the Android Debug Bridge Daemon ADBD, Cell Broadcast Module, some of the Wi-Fi modules, extensions to the software development kit. Google's also worked on a better staged support model, which means less changes in the Linux kernel in Android. And now the security updates directly from Google are supported for six years instead of two. And with Project Mainline, you're getting your uh, updates to these modules through the Google Play Store, whereas before Google would have to distribute them to the manufacturers and the cell providers before you could actually get them. And I got all of this because it was revealed in an ARS Technica Android 11 interview with Google Android engineers David Burke and Ilyan Malchev. Burke also talked about the upcoming generic kernel image. He said, just as Project Trouble focused on making user-facing top half of the operating system more updatable, the GKI is focusing on standardizing a big chunk of the bottom half of Android, the Linux kernel. Currently, the Linux kernel used in Android phone is heavily forked and unique to each individual model of phone. There are usually three forks between Linux and an Android kernel. The GKI isn't mainline Linux yet, but work is happening towards that. It's currently the Android common kernel, so we're dealing with one fork instead of three. So that's progress. In Android 12, Google's planning on shipping the GKI to consumers. Okay, so what is actually new in Android 11 as far as features? So I'm using the Nova Launcher for Android, which is what I always use. Go ahead and open a terminal here and I'll be able to show you that I am in fact running Android 11. So uh, one important feature is that airplane mode no longer affects the connected uh, Bluetooth audio devices. apps like YouTube Those that support Android's picture in a picture feature can be resized though only slightly to, get to your liking you're using standard mix bus each bus and track comes preloaded with an EQ a comp 
and a fader. That's your your chain right there, and all. And we now have a grouping of notifications specifically for your messaging app. So they all go into this conversations category of group notifications. And now the bubbles feature that was only associated with Facebook's Messenger app can be available to all apps that support it. I don't really use any apps that support this feature though, so I can't really demonstrate it. But uh, WhatsApp and all of the Google applications are in that category. Uh, one of my favorite features is the new built-in uh, screen recorder with the ability to capture your phone's microphone or internal audio or both at the same time, which is awesome. And my favorite capturing application, AZ Screen Recorder, does not yet feature capturing both. I believe it got internal audio capture with Android 10, but they need to get on their game. The power menu button has changed and it now has a smart home and device controls so if you have google nest or other smart home capable devices you can add them here and of course you have your google pay and everything else available right there with the long press of the power button uh, we've retained the refined app permissions which we've had these on pixel devices for a while now but they're just now coming to everybody else with Android 11 and they allow you to make specific app permissions when you're using the app or set them to permanent or deny and you also have the ability to have them reset if you don't use the app for an extended period of time and as with every Android version there is an Android Easter egg for 11 and you just have to repeatedly press the Android version under your phone settings. And it won't work the first time, but on the second time, it goes to 11 because of this the Spinal Tap. If you don't know the reference, it's probably not going to make you laugh, but go watch the movie This is Spinal Tap. It's a great movie. Probably my favorite feature of Android 11 though is the notification history. This is something that I feel like should have been baked in from the beginning. You know, if you accidentally swipe that notification away and you're freaking out because you don't know what it was, you can now go and find it. It stores all your app notifications for 24 hours. There's also some behind the scenes stuff like uh, support for wireless Android Auto, which is only going to be available if your vehicle supports it. There's also improved voice control support, and now there is better support for playing content at different refresh rates. Another major change to 11 is with the sharing menu. When you hit share, you have the smart suggested share to apps list. But now if we click more, we can bring up all the possible apps and actually pin an app that we choose to the share to apps list so that we can have that list reflect whatever we want to actually be there. And we've got a few pixel only features as well. I don't use the uh, Pixel Launcher, so I tried to demonstrate this, but it, it doesn't really work for me because I guess you actually have to use the Pixel Launcher for this to work. But basically, Pixel Launcher will study what apps you use and how you use them and when you use them, and the five apps in your home screen from your Pixel Launcher will change depending on your routines and what the Pixel thinks you're going to need throughout the day, which is pretty cool. It's also got other upgraded machine learning tweaks like smarter responses and things like that. I think Google Assistant gets some improvements. And the multitasking menu has some cool new features. Uh, when you bring up the multitasking menu, you now have the ability to take a screenshot 
and it brings up the little share or edit features. But what's even cooler is this little select feature, which allows you to select text from any open app on your screen. And then you have the ability to copy, search, or share the text. And another feature that I can't really demonstrate for you, but I have a little video of, is the AR indicator or augmented reality indicator for shared locations. So your phone will be able to show you where the person who shared the location to you is, which is very helpful if you're trying to find someone. You've just arrived at a general address, but you're trying to find the person that you came to see. And if you want to check out all of the features available with Android 11, you can simply go to android.com 11, and you can find out all of the various enhancements, which are broken up into subcategories. So that's everything of note in Android 11. Overall, I think it's a pretty good update. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this content, I do lots of content like it, especially about Linux, but also games, some news, and all kinds of stuff about making graphics, audio, and video with Linux. So if you want more, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check back often. And until then, I will see you in the next one.